Welcome to Skyhawks Minute, sponsored by Fort Lewis College on Durango's hit music station. And I'm Wally D. I'm thrilled to be joined today by JoJo Lutz, senior defense for the Fort Lewis College lacrosse team. And JoJo's leadership on and off the field, coupled with her outstanding performance, has made her a standout athlete and a student at Fort Lewis College. And today we're going to dive into JoJo's journey from her remarkable achievements on the lacrosse field and her impactful roles in student leadership. So let's get started and learn more about JoJo's inspiring story. Welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you. And let's start out with, um, I know, you know, you're a senior captain of the Los lacrosse team and, and you're also the uh, president of the student athlete advisory committee. And so you've had a significant leadership role on and off the field. How have the responsibilities shaped your approach to lacrosse and your overall college experience? Yeah, I have been on uh, SAC for four years now. So it's been a big part of my journey here at Fort Lewis. I think it's really shaped my life as an athlete, but also outside of my life as an athlete. I think getting being an athlete is you're able to see so many different roles and how you view college and there's certain areas that you want improvement on. And I think SAC is that area where if you see something that you want to improve it on, you can uh, use SAC to help with that. Something that we've really honed in on is life skills event that we have at least three times each semester where we have focus on either like mental health, uh, nutrition, stuff like that, where we can help educate our athletes on. Definitely. So, and that, and that probably also makes you more of a people person because you're dealing with a lot of the, the student athletes there at uh, Fort Lewis. Yeah, we actually have two representatives from each team. So we're able to, I guess, mingle with those other athletes that you usually don't get to talk to or kind of relate to. I know lacrosse is a very specific sport and I've met a lot of people on the cross country team and they are one of a kind. I think running cross country is the hardest thing. Like for us, we run the rim as a um, as a workout and they think that's a warm up. So, you know, props to them. I think it's awesome meeting other athletes and hearing about their experience. Right. And, you know, in mentioning running the rim, it also brings up the fact that you're from, I believe, Beaverton, Oregon. Is that right? Yeah, and, I'm from Beaverton, Oregon. So, so what's the comparison between where you came from to coming to Durango, Colorado? Oh my gosh. I remember the first time that I came and visited here my junior year and I walked onto the field and just seeing those mountains surround you. I knew exactly. I knew right then that I wanted to come here. It's <laughs> so beautiful. Like it felt like almost like a screensaver. I thought it was unreal. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. All the student athletes that I've interviewed, that's, you know, they, they see the mountains, whether they, they aren't from a mountain place or they are. And, and, you know, it, it is, it's an awesome place to be. Now let's talk about one of the other things that you're really involved in there on the campus. And that's the, the Nike N7, the native American heritage. Talk a little bit about that and what that is. Yeah, so Nike N7 is, it's called, it's almost like a seventh generation. So it represents doing stuff for your seventh generation, doing for the, your kids as kids, right? Like um, a good example that they always use is I recycle so that my kids as kids, don't, you know, don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. Or I keep my culture so then my kids as kids can also practice those same culture events. So something that this is very important to me, being an indigenous athlete representing my tribe, which is from Washington, the Lummi tribe, mm -hmm. and just making sure that people know that you can do both. You can represent your culture and you can play your sport. Something that we, I love that we did was last weekend, we volunteered with the NAC, which is the Native American Center, with their feast day and made sure that their whole um, festival went really well and helped them out wherever they could, making sure that we're keeping the indigenous ties to our sport because it is an indigenous sport. Right. And and there definitely is a lot of indigenous people that play sports. I mean, you know, we see it all throughout the, the community and just some very talented athletes and some very, you know, honorable student athletes um, that play from the indigenous community. And, and, and that's just awesome that you are a part of that and help, you know, forward the recognition of those people. Yeah, it's great to be at a school where you're able to help like celebrate your culture and you have these places like the NAC to go to and like rent books and study and do do everything there where you can still play your sport and still identify with who you are. Right. Now, one of the other things, um, you won the uh, 
the Schuyler Spirit Award, which is a, a remarkable achievement. You know, share about us what that means to you personally and how the contributions to the team and the community. Yeah, um, I think Spirit, I was very honored that I got nominated for that and then even won it. I thought that was a big kind of hoorah for me because I spend most of my time with every sport that I can, um, inviting my team to go to every sport event that we can, like soccer, uh, basketball season right now, we try to go to the women's games as much as possible and supporting our other women athletes. I think it's a big part that devoting your time to your own sport, but if you want people to have support your own sport, you have to do that for the other people too. So I try to devote my time to those other sports and help them out wherever they need it. And I think SAC was a big part of that. I realized, oh, I can do other things with my sport and help other people feel recognized. Like there's nothing worse than not feeling that support when you're playing your game or you're racing and stuff like that. So that was my end goal was just to make everyone feel like they have a spot here at Fort Lewis. Right now. And let's talk a little bit of, more about your lacrosse career. And, um, you know, you one of the things that you've con consistently done is demonstrated your strong defensive skills, you know, with the notable number of ground balls and caused turnovers. What aspects of your game do you feel contribute most to your success for your team? I think just having a strong defense to back me up. Something that we always talk about is our communication on defense is the strongest thing that I think last year we had an amazing defense. And that's because we had so much trust in each other that I was able to go get that ground balls. They would send me out there or we have a high pressure defense, like feeling comfortable in my teammates to have my back. And I think having that bond and having that communication skill is it's amazing. It's just amazing out there. Like it almost feels like we're reading each other's minds. You can just see us on the field, just going back and forth. Not even, we have slight communication, but it's just, we're one unit together. And talk about how you got into lacrosse. Cause to me, you know, it's not prevalent here in the West. It's a big thing, more of an Eastern type thing, but it's catching on here. And, and of course, you know, you being from the Western part of the United States, how did you, you know, get into lacrosse? Yeah. So at the time I was actually playing basketball and I was like so obsessed with basketball and I, everything, my life was devoted to basketball. And then one of my um, friends, his mom came up to me and was like, you know, you should really play lacrosse. Like, I think you'd be really good at it. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll try it out. I'll like, you know, do it as a way to condition myself for basketball. And then I remember my first practice, we went out there and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that playing sports could be this fun. Like the way it was just so much fun to me and I felt so much power and like gratitude to the sport was unlike any other sport I've ever played. I think it's just such a small community due to how small of a sport it is mm -hmm. that people are there just to have fun and make sure that, you know, we're carrying on the sports to all the ages. So what age did you start? I started in seventh grade, so a little later in life, and I think just, you know, that was a great time to start it for me, and I just, after that, I got invited to play on a club team, and I just got started getting invited to these events and stuff like that, taking it more and more seriously, and I guess it started excelling in high school, and yeah, I just had a great coach, too, in high school who really kind of looked after me, and she made sure that I understood, not only played the sport, but understand um, the rules and everything that goes along with it. And, you know, reflecting on your journey from a freshman to now, what moments or experiences have, you know, had the most profound in, impact on your development as a lacrosse player and as a person? Honestly, I think it's the little things like traveling with our team for the first time, getting to know the new freshmen every year and seeing them slowly develop and become more and more outgoing and just more themselves on the lacrosse field. I think it's such a different journey from when I was a freshman and all scared and, you know, trying to make my best, best impression to now trying to bond with those other freshmen or, you know, trying to make sure our team is bonded in the way we were in the past and learning from all everything that we've seen before. I I just, you know, just seeing the journey and seeing the growth in ourselves, but also recognizing that, you know, those new players are going to be those, that's going to be where I am today. Right, right. Yeah, they're going to go through the same thing of, of what you did. And, and uh, of course, uh, I'm sure you got a lot of help from older players too. Oh, yeah, they, they make sure that we're always kind of understanding where we're at and getting the full experience at Fort Lewis. I think Fort Lewis has so much to offer. And 
so you like what you talked about it's so beautiful here and taking advantage of you know like taking that mental break from sports and like going on a walk just going to walk around the rim I'm like this this is beautiful yeah definitely so you know and one of the things for student athletes that can become difficult I mean not only are you a student athlete you're also you know president of this and and uh, you're involved with all different kind of things but how do you balance that with your academics yeah, so I'm currently in my master's program as a GA for the athletic department. It's definitely a lot of work, especially because you have sports where you're spending time um, practicing weights, and then you have your individuals, like your defensive practice and stuff like that. I think the main thing is just staying organized and making your little to-do list for the day, right? Like I know in my Google Sheets when practice is, I know when this is, I know when my meetings are. So just like keeping that organization, I think that's something that you kind of to grow up with and realize, oh, I need to schedule time for myself and I need to schedule time for my homework as well. Right. And, and, you know, and, and you build those skills now because it's something definitely you'll need later in life as you get out into the world. Yeah, exactly. Like just, I think organization is a huge, huge thing with the student athlete. A lot of us feel like, oh my gosh, I don't have a lot of time, but like setting those little times for homework, like we have study hall every Wednesday and making sure that I'm actually studying and not talking to my team about you know, the newest Netflix show or whatever. Right, right. Now, you know, transitioning from high school to college, and I know that was like four years ago, but what was that like? You know, what was that experience, you know, doing that transition? Oh, well, that's a huge transition. That's something that I always look out for for my freshmen on our team is it's a big responsibility. You're left left alone, you know, your first time away from home without your parents and you're kind of just juggling all these classes where you pick your own schedule and then you also have practice and stuff like that. So I think it's just almost like a shock, right? It's a big different experience than high school. You Cause you have this set time in high school that you go to school from like 8 a.m. until 2.30 compared to here where you might have a class at 8 a.m. and then a class at 2.30. So it's a lot different and just realizing, okay, I can do this. And like talking to your older people, like someone that really helped me was Abby Esco. She was a great person that really looked out for me and made sure we were different positions, but she knew how to study and she knew how to kind of help organize stuff for me. Definitely. So it sounds like you had some great leadership even when you came in. Now, um, you're majoring in public health. Is that correct? Yeah, that was my undergrad. And I'm currently doing my master's in educational leadership. Okay. So, so what is your pursuit when you get out of? um out of when he finished at college yeah um so I'm kind of going in two directions right now I can't decide if I want to be in an athletic department or if I want to continue um coaching I've done a couple coaching clinics back at home in Oregon and done a couple camps but now I'm just trying to decide which way I want to go yeah you have some big decisions now I mean have you looked at you know do you want to go back home do you want to go to a different part of the country what are you, well, what are you tending to right now? Um, hopefully I get to stay here at Fort Lewis. I really love Fort Lewis and I love, I guess the small community, not small community, but the community here is great. I love dealing, like having a second family here and I want to create that for other people too. Definitely. So Jojo, thank you for joining us today. It's been an honor to have you and, and uh, you know, you're going to do great things there. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we've been talking to Jojo Lutz of the Fort Lewis College student athlete lacrosse team, senior captain, president of SAC and all kinds of things. And be sure and join us uh, again next week as we'll have more student athletes right here on Skyhawks Minute, sponsored by Fort Lewis College on Durango's hit music station.